There are a lot of students in college that are studying to be engineers. But the thing to keep in mind is that there are different engineering majors. So there's mechanical, there's industrial, there's electrical, there's environmental. And I'm sure I'm missing several, but there's tons. There's tons of choices. In this video, I want to talk about what is considered by most people to be the hardest engineering major. And this is just from general consensus. This is because I've had a lot of students that are engineering majors, and they all say that this is the hardest major. And as a student, I had lots of friends who were engineering majors, and they also agree that this is the hardest major. And it seems that the general consensus is that electrical engineering is the hardest engineering major. When I was in college, I had friends who were studying electrical engineering, and I don't know, they just had a really hard life. Like they did their homework on the floor, they didn't have any furniture, and they didn't have any air conditioning, and they were just always doing homework. And they were doing math that I didn't even see in my math classes as a math major. I remember they were doing Laplace transforms, and even though I had done Laplace transforms, the math that they were doing was more advanced, at least in that specific field with relation to Laplace transforms. So in this video, I wanna show you a book that you can use to learn the hardest major. That's right, this is a book that you can buy. It's fairly inexpensive because you can get used copies. It's really good, it has good reviews on the internet. And it's a modern book, it's modern in its layout even though it's an older edition. The book is called Electrical Engineering Principles and Applications and it's by Alan R. Hambly. Now, this is not a perfect book and I'm not saying that this is the best book to learn engineering. So if you have other opinions on books that might be good, leave a comment in the comment section below because it can help other people who are trying to learn, especially any electrical engineers who happen to be watching this video. And they are kind of a minority. There's not that many electrical engineers. Just to make the point, in a typical calculus class of let's say 30 students, let's say 20 are engineers, you might only get one or two students that are electrical engineers and the rest of them might be mechanical or something else. And I don't know why, I don't know why. It could be because it's harder, it could be because there's more math. I don't know. So let's take a look at this book because I think this book is perfect for anyone who's interested in learning what electrical engineering is and what it's about. So this one's an older edition. This one is from 1997. It's dedicated to Judy and Tony. And here are some of the topics that you cover as an electrical engineer and again, it's very accessible to people, so if you know some mathematics, you can actually pick up this book and start reading and learning. So it's an overview of electrical engineering. That's the introduction there. It talks about some of the laws. Resistive circuits. So you do see some math here. We'll look at some of the math there in a minute. It's math that you might see in an algebra or pre-calc class, actually. Inductance and capacitance. Transients. Steady state sinusoidal analysis. So topics that you might be familiar with or you might not be familiar with depending on whether you know some electrical engineering. And if you don't, that's okay. This book is meant to teach you, you know, from the ground up, some basic concepts in electrical engineering. Yeah, this is really cool. It's really interesting because I think that it would be cool if people who took engineering classes could learn this you know, maybe at the same time they were learning some of the math so they could see what it's like. Electrical Engineering Principles and Applications. What a nice book. See what it says here. In this chapter, we introduce electrical engineering. Define the circuit variables, current, voltage, power, and energy. Study the laws that these circuit variables obey and meet several circuit elements. We get to meet them. Current sources, voltage sources, and resistors. And then here it tells you uh, some things. The study of this chapter will enable you to, and it's really like modern. Again, it's an older book, but it just you know, it tells you what to expect. One big downside of this book, and this is a big one, is that it doesn't seem to have answers to the exercises, which is really, really bad, but the book is so good, and it's so inexpensive, and the layout is so cool. It's just like a modern layout. It's simple. It has color, but it's not like overpowering. It doesn't have like pictures of people everywhere. Um, I feel like this was a good era for textbooks, you know, like they were modern, but they weren't insane. The size is right. Uh, it's just really, really nice, clear to the point. Um, the font is right. It's not overdone. It's just a really good book. 
on engineering. Let's look at some of the math. Let's just jump around. So here we have something that you might have seen in a pre-calc course. This is a method for solving systems of equations. And here you can see why this method is kind of beneficial. You have decimals and stuff. So whenever you have decimals and you're solving systems of equations, it's kind of annoying to have to um, you know, use traditional methods. I mean, you could you know, multiply both equations by 10, and that way those decimals become whole numbers. But this book uses another approach. It uses something known as Kramer's rule. And so you can use Kramer's rule to solve the node voltage equations of example 2.7. And then it goes through, and you can see it actually does show the work, which is pretty cool, right? So it's really fun when you, when you pick up a book like this on engineering, and then you, you see that you can use a lot of the mathematics that you've learned in other classes. I, I, I don't know, I just think it makes it cooler. Here's another example. Here we have Kramer's rule with um, a three by three matrix. So this is for solving a three by three system of equations. So apparently we're solving this one here. So that would be very, very annoying to solve uh, without Kramer's rule. I mean, I guess you could do it. You could multiply everything by 100 and that would turn everything into whole numbers, but it's pretty tedious and pretty laborious. Um, so I think it's pretty convenient to be able to use Kramer's, especially if you have access to a calculator and you can uh, compute these determinants quickly. However, in this case, you'll notice that the first column here and here the second column and here the third column there's lots of zeros, so it makes the computation of, the of these determinants pretty easy, uh, which, is, which is quite convenient. But yeah, I just wanted to show you this book because it has a lot of mathematics, and it's the hardest engineering major, right? Electrical engineering is considered the hardest. It is, it is the hardest, you know, by all accounts, right? From what I've heard, uh, after years of teaching, through years of teaching, and with being a student and having friends who were electrical engineers and other engineers, people always say it's the hardest because of the mathematics and stuff. They say that there's more math in electrical engineering than other majors. Now, I, I don't know if that's true, um, but I do know there is math in electrical, and it's pretty cool. So yeah, just wanted to show you this book. What do you think? Do you think electrical is, is the hardest major? Do you think other engineering majors are harder, leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you want to learn mathematics, I do actually have math courses. I don't have an electrical engineering course, but I do have math courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, which is reputable and stuff. But if you buy my courses, please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com, as it helps me greatly. Also, it helps you because I've lowered the prices to make them as low as possible. So if you use my links, you should get a really low price. And if you found any value in this content, feel free to subscribe if you want to. Also, I do have another channel. It's a fitness channel. And of course, it's called The Fitness Sorcerer. So yeah. Anyways, if you take anything away from this video is, it should be is, is electrical engineering the hardest major? What do you think, right? Let me know, leave a comment below. Until next time, keep doing mathematics or engineering.